thanks, Christine. And I'm I'm really excited. I've honestly never facilitated one of these before, um, but I'm drawing inspiration from a couple of different places that I've actually encountered a similar format, a similar form. Um, so uh, I'm using the name Offers and Needs Market, but I've also heard it referred to as a gifting circle. Um, and I think there's a bunch of other forms as well, um, because each one of these formats actually has a different lens on this type of activity. And so I'm really hoping that we can hold the community lens um, when we're looking at this one today. So I'll just share my screen a little bit because it'll help us walk through this process together. Um, but bef before I do that, could I actually uh, get everyone just to introduce themselves a little bit, um, do a bit of a check-in in, in the chat um, because this is an interpersonal thing. So I'd love it if you just wanted to share into the chat, maybe one or two words about how you're feeling today um, and one or two words about what you're curious about um, with this activity based on just having read mm -hmm. the description. Say that again, was it how we're feeling? And then what was the second part? What we're hoping to get out of today? Yeah. Okay. What you're curious about was what Yeah. So when I'm thinking about the process that we're about to go through, I'm considering everything, everything that happens here to be a part of the experience. And I mentioned that I've seen this done in several different formats because what we're doing here today is kind of, I can view it a bit as an experiment with this particular group of people, let's see where it goes. Um, and that everything that arises will be considered to be a part of the experiment. Um, so as we check in, as we do this check in, how does it shift how we're feeling towards each other as a community? How does this sharing of information across this network in this sort of public space, the chat box, how is that different than each of us sort of speaking into the middle? Um, and how does that affect our experience of being in community with each other? So I'll start by sharing my screen. Um, I like to do things in Miro. Um, hopefully you guys are able to see this. So, so I'm calling it the offers and needs market today. Um, and it's for me, it's looking at the intersection between social systems mapping and economics. Um, economics being how do we exchange resources between each other um, in a way that meets our needs or creates value? Um, and we could think of that narrowly in terms of our own individual self-interest. How do I put food in my belly? Or we might think of that more broadly, like what is it that the community itself needs? When we look at this social systems mapping community, um, what does that, what, how does that um, community think of value? That's interesting to me as well. Um, and so I've worked with the Post Growth Institute um, and they look at this at the market level. So this is a really cool way that we can mimic some parts of the economy just in this small group of, I think there's like 11 people here now. So we get to create a mini economy and we can use that to understand global economics. I've also done this um, at a retreat where the emphasis was on the individual. How does it feel for you to actually ask people that you may not really know for things that you need? Um, one person said, I have a tooth that really, really hurts and I don't have enough money to get this, this tooth filled. I'd be grateful for any money that people would contribute towards that. And, and people gave her money. Like it, it just felt like the right thing. I'm not saying that that exact thing would happen here, um, but a lot of the dialogue and questioning after went, what was it like to ask for that? What was it like to sort of trust the community? 
and, and how do we feel differently um, after we've gone through this type of process from before we've actually um, um, done something like this. And then I think for us viewing it from the community lens to say, I at least would make an assumption that several people on this call can sort of view our community from a bird's eye perspective and see all of the different elements and nodes that we represent. And the fact that as we go through this process, you'll be seeing connections forming where maybe I've made this offer and, and you took me up on the offer or, or you said you needed this thing and I said, you know what, I can totally help you with that. And in that way, we're actually creating new connections of trust or value flow or something within the community itself. And so um, at the end of this process, um, I'll invite a discussion into what are we noticing um, either at this community level from a social systems perspective, or maybe there's something you're starting to see about overall economies, or maybe you're just learning something about yourself. Um, but I'd like to invite us to consider that noticing things at each of these different levels is all a part of this experimental experience that we're gonna go through today. Um, so I'm gonna try and facilitate this. I think we've got about 50 minutes left in this hour chunk um, to go through the process. And then um, we have a bonus half an hour for other discussions. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> so to take us right up there, um, we do need uh, to get some paper and pens for this activity. So I'm just gonna give you uh, about a minute or two to make sure you can grab either one or two blank sheets of paper and a pen. So once you've got a paper and pen um, for the folks that are here, um, we're gonna be making two different tables and this is gonna help us keep track of all of our offers and needs. And I'm gonna describe the process as we go through it. Um, I'm not gonna describe the overall process at the beginning. And I guess if you have questions, you could send them to me in the chat, um, but hopefully I should be answering things. Um, I'm hoping to keep this as lightweight as possible without me over explaining things. So you're, you're going to have an offers table and a needs table for yourself, and you're going to have an offers table and a needs table um, for others. So you can, you can see on the screen, I've just sort of put offers, um, and maybe you'll leave some space below offers, um, and then you'll also have needs, and you'll leave some space below that. We'll also be thinking of timing, cost, and timing and reimbursement. So if you want to kind of model, like demonstrate that on your uh, piece of paper, um, that will be our setup. So one sheet's for the offers, the other sheet's for the needs? I do offers and needs for myself on one, and then I oh. do offers and needs from others on the other sheet. Yeah, perfect. And Narayan, the, the, the sheet for the others is for, are you keeping track of everything that everybody else is saying, or are you keeping track of the things that, that resonate for you, or what's, how, where are the other ones coming from? If Yeah, just the ones that resonate with you. Okay. So I'm just sort of holding mine up here. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I think my writing skills have gone downhill. <laughs> mine totally have, so... I only type anymore. Do I hear a need? Oh, yeah. Um, okay, so hopefully you've just got some of these things written down. Um, it's not too complicated. So we're gonna spend, we're gonna start by spending um, five minutes to think of offers that we might make to the community. Um, and then we're gonna have an offer circle where we're probably gonna split into, I think, uh, we'll do two breakout rooms um, for us to sort of put our offers into the middle in the community. Um, and so some tips on thinking about offers. You don't have to accept what people, if somebody says, I'd like to take you up on that offer, you can still say no to them. Because <laughs> maybe you're like, oh, this is an offer and I'm kind of thinking it for this person, but somebody else said, yes, I don't want to do that. That's fine too. Um, and it can be anything. You can see on the screen, I've put some 
suggestions in here. You could do like some services, you could do, I don't know, languages. Um, maybe you wanna offer, oh, I like to talk about these things. I'd offer an, a conversation about this. Maybe it's an offer for financial support or, hey, I have all these extra books. I'm willing to mail out a book to somebody. Um, anything, anything you can imagine. I've found that these things tend to work really well when you include personal offers, because that seems to open up space in terms of other things that might be more, uh, not professional, but like themed for this community. So you don't have to just limit it to, I offer to look at your map and offer feedback. It doesn't have to be about maps, it can be about anything. And of course, this is all in the spirit of, we're just running an experiment here. So um, if you're not sure, feel free to write that down and, and, and see where it goes. Because maybe you'll, you'll discover something about yourself when you actually language that into the middle. So you've got the first column, which is just offers. Um, the next one is timing. So I offer this anytime. I offer this sometime in the next two weeks. I offer this once. However you want to describe any timing related aspect to this offer, um, feel free. Um, and then cost. So it doesn't, you could offer to say, I'll, I'll do this for free for somebody, or you might say, uh, or you can ask for something. I'll do this for 200 bucks, <laughs> whatever you want to do. So those are the three elements. So I'm just going to give us, let's say another three more minutes um, to fill that out. Just to be clear, we're filling this out on the page that's the self page? Yes, so because the next step- I want to offer or that I need. Yeah, and right now we're just going to focus on offers. We'll do the needs in a, in a later stage after the offers. So are we doing this on Miro or just on our paper? Our own paper. Yeah. Just on your paper. Okay. Yeah. And you can be brief. You don't need to write a huge description on the offer. There will be time to elaborate on these things. So just as long as you have a little mental bookmark to say, this is a thing I might offer to people. I have a question for you, Narayan. Um, yeah. Do you ever do this in two rounds and find that you get different sorts of offers the second round when people have been through it once? Absolutely. Yeah, like a deepening. When you see what other people are offering, it. oh man, you'll have so many more things that come up. Absolutely. We'll just do one more minute on this. Anything else that comes up? <clears throat> All right, so I think by now you've got a couple of offers on here, um, sense of timing and cost for these things. Um, will I be sharing the Miro? Yeah, I can, I can share the Miro with people if you want. I just sort of put this together uh, to describe today's process. Um, so now that you've got these listed, we're gonna go into two different breakout rooms. Um, oh, let's see. Actually, we've got 15 participants. Mm, okay, let's do three breakout rooms. Um, so that we have uh, five people in each room. Um, and for this next part, uh, we're going to limit it to 15 minutes. And so this is, this is fairly tightly time bound. Um, but where we're going to go from here is we're going to just quit. We're going to quickly go in a circle and share our offers. And as you're listening to people share their offers on the others table or, or sheet of paper, just jot down any, um, any offers that sort of uh, peak your attention um, so that you can follow up with them. So with five people, if you spend two minutes max per person, just very quickly going through the offers that you have, um, should be able to do everybody in 10 minutes and you'll have another five minutes uh, where either through the chat or into the middle, you might ask for clarifications on any other offers there. Um, yeah in case you wanted to actually take up something, uh, take up one of the offers as well. 
Yeah, and you can make connections or ask verbally in that latter, latter five minutes. So the format of, of sharing um, is, again, very lightweight and simple. Uh, just state your name, uh, what you're offering, the timing, and the cost. So I might say something like, I'm Narayan. I'm offering developmental conversations uh, to put you on your learning edge. I offer that anytime, uh, and it would be for free for this community. And then I would say, and the next thing on my list is, I'd like to offer virtual tours of Toronto through Zoom on my phone, a walking tour um, during the week for free. So that would be like two things that I'd say. And I, I get two minutes. If you don't get through everything on your list, that is okay. If your list is really short, that is also okay. Any questions before we go into the breakout rooms? Welcome back, everybody. Ah. Oh. Let's just take one breath as we all come back into the room together. And I'd like to invite you in the chat to share one thing you noticed. And it could be that you noticed about the community, about the small group, about your own reaction to that process. But in the chat, let's just share one thing you noticed. So the next, the next part of this, um, and, and I would encourage you to continue to hold that, um, that balcony lens on what are we noticing through this process? Because the next part is the need section, and it might feel different than the offer section. So we're gonna spend about three minutes filling out um, in our personal sheet of paper, uh, all of the needs that we have, things that we would feel comfortable asking for in this group or even things you don't feel comfortable asking for. All of these things, um, feel free to challenge by choice there. Um, so we've got the three, question, the three questions. So what is the need? What is the timing? Is this urgent? Is this, I only kind of need this. So if it's convenient, maybe that makes sense. Um, that kind of timing and any reimbursement. So whether you'd say, I'd just like to get this as a gift or I can exchange something, like I'm happy to do an exchange of values or I have money to spend on this, um, that as well. And, and I'll also remind you that if somebody offers to meet one of your needs, you don't have to accept. We are, we're practicing putting these things into the middle and maybe you realize actually just one person I would like to <laughs> fill this need and I have too many offers or something. Um, we'll sort of see what comes up. So. Uh, just we'll do another three more minutes. Actually, let's just go two minutes now. Uh, think about needs. All right, let's uh, wrap up any other needs that you have, and then we'll be gonna we'll we'll be going back into the same breakout rooms um, with a fifteen minute time container on that. So again, two minutes per person. Um, to, uh, and that should hopefully give us enough time for five minutes of, again, making connections. Um, and, and you can also use the chat uh, to say, hey, I heard your need. I'd like to make an offer for you. Um, you can do that in the chat as well uh, when, we're, when we're in our breakout rooms. All right. Feel free to join the room. Welcome back, everybody. Let's again take a nice deep breath in this new context. We have one minute left for the first hour, uh, which is the official uh, process part before we move into the reflection. Um, so if you've got to leave um, at the hour, I invite you to send messages to any people in the chat um, and exchange contact information if that is something that you'd need to do. For the reflection period, um, Maybe, you know what, in addition to the breath that we took, let's all just give ourselves a bit of a stretch because we've just been here for the first hour. Oh. <laughs> I hope you can't hear how much my back just cracked doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, what I'd like to do is I'd like to surface a couple of themes and then maybe do a, maybe do maybe like a 10 minute breakout room um, clustered by the different themes that we're hearing and what, what sort of the interests are. Um, so I think at this point, I'll invite people just to share into the middle, maybe just 
fairly briefly, um, we'll get a couple of people just to share what are some of the things that you noticed through going through this overall process? Things you noticed or questions? And, and I'll, I'll take notes on the Miro board. Um, if there's other Miro heads as well, I'll pop the link into the chat and you can also take notes there. Um, but yeah, this is just me looking for patterns in, in what we noticed. Uh, and then we'll make some breakout rooms to explore these a little bit more deeply. Um, I can share that um, the first part felt less vulnerable than the second part. Like I felt more empowered to support community as opposed to thinking me, me, me. Um, it was vulnerable, but I guess, yeah, it felt scary. I had asked for like help finding work. So even like saying that out loud, felt very vulnerable in a way that probably I'll like, I'll feel the waves of over the day and I'll have to remind myself that it's okay that I did that. Yeah. So, so we were discussing at the end, um, the pros and cons of being in small groups in terms of on the one hand trust and on the other hand, a smaller market for offers and needs and how we might leverage the small group work into a larger group. And also the thing like how spread out are we geographically? How much of this exchange can be virtual or in person? The, the just noticing that difference. And another thing that emerged for me is like, at least like with the people that I was in a breakout group, I don't necessarily like knew any of you before this. And I'm just wondering like how it is this process has changed one if there's more relationship building in other ways happening or even just doing the same offers and needs on a more like ongoing basing in a community like in your neighborhood in your workplace in a community like this so this is another thing that i'm just yeah curious about how that kind of changes if it's if it's more of a, a longer term process and way of you know asking and offering and support and exchanging and i I heard real just building on that, Laura. I appreciate that. Um, I heard really clearly from Christine the the desire to kind of figure out how to maintain, how to sustain that that community, that relationship. Um, you know, both in terms of kind of keeping keeping motion and everything else. I, the other thing that occurred to me was um, that a lot of this kind of asking has has happened over the slack community over the years that i've been involved in it and um i i, I wonder if there's some uh some formality of this or or something that can, not even formality but something that can be carried over from this into that that space of like being able to offer ask you know express a need express a uh, something that i'm kind of working on that i could share or something like that just to give kind of a, a little bit of form to that as part of the ongoing ask i was really inspired a number of years back by um, uh, Amanda Palmer's The Art of Asking, um, which is a mixed bag for some people. But, um, but for me, what it brought up really was that uh, if you keep the community rolling, like if you, if you have these regular interactions, then it becomes more and more comfortable to make those asks and they're more and more fruitful and everybody feels good for being asked as well as for being able to, uh, to ask themselves. So. Yeah, I noticed. I noticed that uh, when others were asking it, I felt it, it. Somehow, it felt made me feel more like more able to be present. Like seeing that vulnerability, or you know, hearing other people asking for things, just sort of ma makes it easier to then feel like there's less barrier between us overall, and we're and we're more connected. <clears throat> Sorry, Jonathan, you were starting to say something. Can I cut you off? No? Okay. Um, I noticed that there were lots of times where I thought about, and when someone made an ask, um, my extended network, or even an offer, my extended network, not just what was in the room, but people that might be, uh, other people that I know that might want to be uh, responding to an offer or an ask. Um, and those networks aren't in the room. Yeah. If only we had some kind of tool that could connect people up across yeah. those networks and share that information. Yeah, well, how the hell we do that? 
Well, that, is, that, that was part of the impetus for this is to start to think about how could we generate more more interaction between the maps and the in the in the um, engagement within the community and how can we facilitate that I mean what's the what are what's the link between the two that is actionable that would um, help both make the map a little bit more engaged with as well as develop use the map to develop more connections. One thing I noticed in our small group was that we had a lot of people that were interested in, in human development and organizational development work, which having looked at the offers and needs in the SumApp community map, I wouldn't have made that prediction. So there was something about the open-ended nature that people mm -hmm. were sharing. Yeah, I, I got mm -hmm. a real sense of what was in the middle for the five people that were in this group. And I'm also curious about how that like exists with the other three groups or the other two groups, if you notice something different in the middle and how we could actually use these maps to surface other types of connections that we aren't looking for. Mm -hmm. Human system dynamics was largely in our middle too, I think. And I was kind of surprised by it because I didn't think that many people even knew about human system dynamics, but maybe it's because of the type of people we bring into the type of conversation. I'm wondering, uh, aside from tools or um, whether convenings or, or gatherings such as this would, um, especially if they were on a regular basis or could be quarterly or whatever, mm -hmm. um, whether that um, helps engender more trust and more of a dynamic picture of offers and asks. I noticed that we didn't, we barely had time to get through our round of, you know, what was supposed to be two minutes each, let alone process that in any way or ask any clarifying questions or get to know each other. So that sort of the mechanics of just getting, developing and sharing these lists took up the bulk of our time and your explanation of it. And um, it occurs to me that, that a lot of that could happen asynchronously and then the synchronous time, not as a substitute for the synchronous time, but so that the synchronous time is used in a, in a different and more interactive and directly engaging kind of way. I mean, I can read a list much faster than I can listen to someone speak it, for example, right? And I could make a better list of offers and needs myself if I had a little more time to think about it rather than doing mm -hmm. it at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, not to say there's anything wrong with doing it this way. I think there's a lot of energy that shows up and, and having to think of things in the moment has its value too. Um, and given, given the technology that's tying us together, it is leaving me wondering about ways to innovate off this basic pattern. I, I wonder about ways of combining the small group, let's experiment with it, with going to a mural or Miro or something where we could share and then look at what other people are doing and then possibly even clustering and, and how that might also fit with the mapping. Is it separate? Is it complementary? Does it feed into how we would want to map in the future? I think th there could be some fun experiments here. I think there's some, some both ands there. Um piling on to what Ben said, but also on the earlier comments about the, the level of trust that gets built through the sharing, the vulnerability um, that gets built through the, through, especially through the, off, uh, the asks. Um, I was thinking about my experience in this community is there's a lot of people that I know have a lot of energy and thoughtfulness and I don't reach out to them um, in Slack or whatever. And, um, uh, you know, so any kind of regular structure that starts to build this muscle for us, I think would make it easier uh, to reach out, make asks in a general sense. Mm. Uh, related to what Jeff just said, I was also just both of myself and in the group sensing the openness and also sensing like barriers, like 
there's like somehow you know like in ecosystems nature just keeps flowing like they're not like making lists or like wondering if that's okay to ask or to meet or whatever but somehow in human systems we have like just to use a general term like these kind of barriers and I was also yeah like noticing that inside of myself and in, inside of our group um, so that's just something um, that yeah like a like a pattern and but yet there's still so much like openness and curiosity to like go beyond or see what comes up if we have these kind of conversations and exchanges um, yeah and the kind of like format or supportive structure that can enable that to happen um, maybe more easily or freely or something. <laughs> that feels related to one of the things I've been thinking about a lot recently is, is as the, you know, as the, as the founder of this community and the person who puts, you know, a lot of regular attention into, into generating the, the, the activities of the community and being present for people. I, I've been thinking about how, like I have this sense of the richness of who's here. And what, like when sometimes when people were saying uh, some a need that they have or an offer that they have, I was thinking, oh, so-and-so, oh, so-and-so, okay. And that's all in my head. And I just, you know, we have this whole concept of a social system map, which is supposed to help get those things out of my head and into the community. But there's still this layer of how do people who are brand new um, or who haven't had much interaction aside from showing up for a session and listening or um, a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me, because there are a whole lot of people in this community have had one-on-one -on -one conversations with me and don't know anybody else in the community. And so how do we make it so that they understand that it that there's this whole bunch of people here that they could ask things of and help them just sort of step into being able to access the richness of the community. So this just this whole process i'm really trying to figure out how does that help make the community safer and 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 build trust and, and give people access quicker in ways that they can access without a session like this like a session like this is wonderful but also if they're just showing up for the first time and, and they're in a month where they have a bunch of needs related to something that they can just know here's a place rather than um you know so like a yeah i'm just trying to think of a rhythm and a way of making it more publicly you know more visible beyond the moment that we're in um yeah yeah I, to, to me one of the answers to that that also picks up on what jonathan was talking about is to think to develop the capacity for the live convenings to be much more targeted and organized, but self-organized based on the data that, that we have. So we can look at the map and we can see where things are clustering. And then we can extend more specific invitations for people to get together for the live intimate engagement, knowing we share a context that's going to make this work much more relevant. And then it's not this game of, you know, it's only happening once a quarter and you're kind of randomly stuck with whoever you are. And if you can't make this time, then there's no live space for you at all. And you're just stuck in dry text-based or map-based, you know, engagement. Um, so to me, unlocking our capacity to self-organize into lots of live small groups is, is just key to this and many, many other things. Yeah. Mm. I have a quick thing to add, or Christine. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. I just, yeah, because, um, you know, somebody I mentioned Amanda Palma and her like TED talk or way of like asking. And yet I think that came to me is like, yeah, I think there's a real power in this asking and then also an invitation. Like, how are we inviting each other? And this is like, it's came up now as Ben as you were speaking, like, basically, you know, like recognizing a pattern and convening a call around it is the art of invitation. Like you make an invitation, let's meet around, you know, specific topics. So for me, that that just came together now is like, okay, like how are we asking, but also how are we inviting? Mm -hmm. And like individually or collectively in the kind of systems and structures and offers and, and what we're inviting each other to, to be and show up or talk about. I can mention that um, I'm as a newcomer to the network, um, like one of the early things that I did was look at the network map and search by like meta filters and found people with similar interests. And then did, I invited people for information interviews and I had one with someone in New Zealand 
Um, and that was really cool. And I also felt like, wow, this is a rich resource. And I don't know if I can like directly spot exactly like, I, I don't know, it felt like boundless. And I, I craved more mm -hmm. meta tags to be able to do what Ben was saying. Thanks for that. That's good to hear. So it's working. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> That's good to hear. Yeah. Just as a side note, it would be great to harvest what people think those meta tags are <laughs> so that it could be plowed back into the map uh, in terms of creating creating those the spaces for those tags. Sorry. I Mary. just sorry. Sorry, I just have a, 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 a brief uh, administrative announcement. Kara, could you put the get my link link and the be on the opt-in link into the chat so that anybody who's not on the map um, uh, can put themselves and everyone who is on the map can go in and update themselves if they so are inclined. Yes, thank you. Okay. Sorry, I butted I butt in. I got impatient because I got asked in the DM. Like, this is the perfect time. <laughs> Jim, you were talking. I apologize. No, I, I'm stepping over Mary. I'm sorry about that. I can't remember what I was. Ah, it's so okay. Sorry. No, it's okay. I'm wondering if Tim or Claudia, if you have anything to share. I think I, we haven't heard your voice in a while. So just curious. I was thinking, so I, I mean, I'm familiar with some app and Kumu and all that. We're not. I don't know if we will use that. Um, I think we're trying to actually design a website th that has some of that capacity, um, but that's not my scope, um, that part. So how do you, I think the part that I'm wrestling with a little bit, well, a couple questions came to mind. One, sometimes people ask, um, but there's never any response. So just that, that sense of I'm part of a network and I keep asking and asking, but nobody's responding. So how do you deal with that, I suppose. Um, and I guess maybe there's no really good way to deal with that because you just, if there's no one able to meet that need, there isn't. Um, and then just how to, like, we're, we're thinking a lot about the whole, um, how much do we want to be involved as a backbone? Um, and so how can you make something so self-sustaining that it's, it just sort of perpetuates so that almost that, you know, I've got needs and someone's got, um, you know, the things that they're offering and, and I'm getting it, that's automated. I mean, it sounds very cool, but it's almost like um, I put something into the atmosphere and then something is, um, technology is actually working behind the scenes that when someone joins and, and offers something, they're connecting me with that person and, and maybe sending me an email or like, it's, it's more automated, I guess, than myself having to check, like whether it's a, a network map and actually kind of dig in it myself as opposed to it being something that's happening more organically. So I don't know if anybody has an answer, if that's even the space to talk about it, but those are two questions, um, Laura, that kind of were percolating as everybody was talking and, and even through the experience of today, so. I'm mainly absorbing right now. The, so a lot of what you were saying resonates with me. And one of the things that I, I'm thinking about is, is is the tension between um, trust and efficiency, and how I mean, how do we center? Um, so how when, how can we use each one? It's not when when it's not choosing one, but when like when do we need each one? And I feel that especially for those of us who are new in this space, is is trust tends to be higher in my priority right now. Like so. Like, who am I in this space? How am I being seen? How am I being approached? So all of those questions come to my mind, which makes me, makes really hard to jump and offer a gift that fast. And I think that's part of, that's part of the dance of being aware of our interdependency. Um, so that's, th those are the type of things that are coming to my mind right now and how tools to actually make it faster to, um, exchange are a matter of time and a matter of like they are going to come and some connections are going to be closer than others but how are we intentional on um on practicing practicing that that trust building all the time I and mean, how do we create containers for that so that's what is coming up for me
and it was really hard to get into the cost and reimbursement part. Like that's such a difficult space to be because I think my own relationship with, with wealth and profit is still a working process, uh, having it and the times when I haven't had it. So putting a cost to what I offer was as hard as naming what I can give, especially in terms of financial um, exchange. It's easier in other terms for me, but financial exchange is still, um, it's still something I'm exploring personally. Yeah. No, Ryan, thanks for putting that in the prompt. The cost and when um, made it very real. It's like, oh, I can now, this is actionable, both as an offer and as an ask. So thank you for that. So, so I wonder, is there a way we would want to build on what we did today for at least the people who were part of this, but in other groups? Like comp compiling our lists and sharing it? I mean, that would be one way to do it, yeah. At least we all know we have a common frame of reference since we've all done it. For me, that comes into the question of design considerations. Mm -hmm. um, and I know our group talked a lot about what if we tried this? What if we did needs round first and then offers? Mm -hmm. All of these things sort of change the effect. Um, and I made the design uh, choice to introduce this where the purpose of this was for our learning about this form. And I hadn't actually even pointed to the fact that there is potential for this particular thing to facilitate more, uh, more connection at the object level. Um, so I appreciate, Jonathan, you pointing out that that is an opportunity that's at our plate at this point in the, in the session. So, so I would, I would, I guess I should own. I mean, I would be interested in seeing and sharing, and we could curate. We don't have to share everything we offered or expressed a need for. In a um, retreat that I co-facilitated, we did a space like this, and we made like a Google Doc. But I would say it was so underused. Like nobody ever returned to that Google Doc. But I think the space might be different. And I'm having like the urge to put the onus on doing this work on the network map itself, like it should be able to connect us in this way. Like I want everyone's contact details. I'm like, well, maybe instead of asking everyone, I'll just go in the map, but I don't know. We are currently in a phase, a small group of us, most of whom are here um, in working on uh, incorporating more outreach and interaction with keeping with the map and keeping the map up to date. And, and so I, I've been thinking about how do we take this process and, and integrate that into the other things we're thinking about relative to uh, keeping the map updated as well as, you know, building trust, et cetera. So I'm also with, with you on wanting to put that on the map. And there's a whole social process that needs to go on in order for us to get to that point where we do that in a meaningful way and we figure out a so, the social process around it to, to keep it working um, so that, so that it's, it doesn't just become a, a Google Doc in a, in a drive that nobody comes back to or a map in a drive that nobody comes back to. Um, but so I'm having a, a, inviting any of you who are present who wanna think about that process and help us you know, def define you know, design something that incorporates what we've learned here and and brings it into the the whole mapping framework um, it, that we can leverage better. Anybody who wants to be part of that discussion, um, I would be happy to convene something and start. You know, we'll figure out how to add that to the mapping team process, or is that separate? Whatever. You know, I found it really interesting, Ben's suggestion about using the map as sort of a macro uh, structure to get you close, sort of lump things, 
-hmm. and then have a real invitation that pulls those people into a real time interaction and make that process really easy. Make it, as Laura said, uh, pay attention to how invitations are made and make it easy for people to feel like they can invite people and then facilitate uh, or, you know, so anyway, lower the barriers for how easy it is that muscle to invite and to convene, but also use the map at a more macro level and then use the actual momentary ephemeral face-to-face -face convening as something that happens a lot. Mm -hmm. It's very, I, I, I love that because I don't think the map can do everything mm -mm. As, as automated as we would like it to be. And I think there is a gap between. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was also thinking like what synergy between the map and for example, that offers a needs view or any refinements about that. And then maybe even like an exchange Slack channel or something that's like set, like you can like offer things and ask for things. Um, just as two examples or you know a mirror board or something where we can as, as some other people also shared it, it some of the coordination and exchange can happen like outside of of calls and then we can have lots of small invitations or larger invitations for group gatherings so i think those three are definitely like already existing spaces that we could fill with more live and exchange based on the format that we experience today yeah I wonder what we can share from what we can learn from the mutual aid experience of last year in the United States, and uh, and I was involved in a couple of those, and they work in different in like in different levels. There was a sense of urgency at the time that made people use the tools because because they were engaged in that. But most people were mainly using Google Drive. Many people were just putting an Excel document together. It was there was not a need to spend too much time in the tool, and they had spent a lot of time in uh, in in making sure it existed and and it someone was moving it all the time. So I, I wonder just if there is something we can learn from that. And also from the Facebook barter groups that popped up. So we had a barter group where people were exchanging things, but then we had a, a neighborhood gift group. There was no bartering allowed. And people were at the level of granularity of saying, you know, I just bought two dozen cookies and I'm only gonna eat six, come over to my porch. They're sitting on the, you know, it's like ridiculously level, low level exchanges that people engaged in. It's very rich. And so there's something about thinking about the granularity level of what our exchanges, what the currency is and so forth, that's probably important as well. Mm. Quick thing that I'm noticing is like with social system mapping, like so much of it is about connections, right? And weaving connections and relationships. But like now with this call, like the exchange pathway into a system is much stronger and it it works well with connections because if you have more connections like what you shared christine it would be easier to know what to who to ask what or how to facilitate exchange but it's also a, a really different pathway into the community or for energy to flow and and you can have connections and know people and not have any exchange going on right like if i'm not inviting or asking for anything i could know like 50 people in the community, but there's no flow of exchange. Right. So that's just something I'm noticing, like connections and exchange and, and, and in the whole thing about how we're moving this forward to see how both can be like strengthened within the social system. Mapping. This session has been really encouraging to me because psychologically, I always think uh, because leaders are so tired and weary and time, not having any time that I've been, become used to um, that as a lens that the possibilities for this type of generosity are very rare because um, people are more in a scarcity uh, mindset.
I think that's a I think that's a great spot for us to sort of pause now because I'm noticing that we're at time. And I've been taking notes in the Miro. I'm just seeing there's so many good notes in the chat right here. Um, and I did want to just thank you so much for um, participating and bringing your whole selves here. I feel like we're barely tapping into the rich complexity of all the different perspectives on this type of activity. Um, and so I'll put out one final offer, which is if people want to have further conversations about bringing this type of form uh, to other contexts in your life, um, I am connected with people who facilitate this in a real way. I was just kind of making it up as I went along. Um, but yeah, I'd love to. Um, yeah, can't, can't wait to see you guys again in, in uh, future conversations. Is that the Post Growth Institute folks? It is, yeah. And, and you know what, I'll post um, just one link that would help you find out a bit more of this. Uh, <laughs> these are Donnie's instructions. He's uh, one of the fearless, fearless, the fearless leader of the Post Growth Institute, but he's sort of got some of his steps here. And you, you, if you read that, you'll actually notice the design choices that I did differently uh, than how this is typically set up. And a quick note to that, I also have experience with two different formats that have very similar function to what you shared today. So um, yeah, if there's another conversation to explore that, it may be helpful to integrate. Cool. Ryan, was there a link to the reference you just made? Or in the chat? Yeah, I put it in the chat. Oh, okay, sorry, thanks. Well, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Narayan. I'm, um need to jump off, but um, this was really wonderful. And I feel like it really opened up a lot of uh, potential and things for us to explore. And um, just just doing it was opened a lot of potential in and of itself. So thank you for that. Thank you all for being here. Appreciate it. Lovely. OK. Have a good day, thank everyone. You. See you. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone.